my talk is about how to create an, an easy crypto economy. And what we've noticed in Dubai is um, that the, there's a lot of bad stigma and bad press around cryptocurrencies, around uh, even uh, the people who deal with cryptocurrencies as ICOs and the ICO ecosystem and the cryptocurrency economy in general. And what we've seen also is that everyone praises blockchain, but nobody wants to praise cryptocurrency because of a lot of factors. Some, uh, some include, uh, but are not limited to um, the price volatility and the companies that succeed, especially as ICOs. So uh, what we're looking at as uh, Dubai in general is to uh, and Dubai and UAE in general, I mean, is to make cryptocurrencies easy and accessible and uh, create the laws based on principles rather than rules to enable this crypto economy to come here without having a preset regulation or too much control over uh, what the cryptocurrencies uh, uh, can do. And that's why you haven't seen any laws come out uh, so far for uh, regulating cryptocurrencies or ICOs in, in Dubai. We want to be careful. We want to uh, enable the technology rather than hinder it. Uh, what we focus uh, uh, on should be on user experience, should be, uh, you know, all the cryptocurrencies that are represented here today and that are uh, anywhere around the world should focus on the seamless user experience. We still haven't reached that. We still, as a uh, cryptocurrency and uh, um, blockchain economy, haven't really uh, broken that, uh, that challenge, which is making the user experience easy. Uh, one of the uh, issues with cryptocurrency uh, and the ease of use is identity. We, ha we still haven't cracked the identity problem. There's a lot of companies that are trying to uh, have something like a federated identity or sovereign identity on the blockchain. But so far, there is nothing that actually solved it and solved it with a good user experience, good ecosystem, good onboarding for people uh, into this system, basically. So what have we done in Dubai so far and what have I done personally in this space? Uh, I started in 2014, and uh, the first license I applied for was uh, for uh, ATMs and portals. So what I wanted to do is create an, uh, a way in Dubai for people to be able to purchase cryptocurrencies uh, with cash, small amount, just to get their hands dirty, as they say, for getting into this crypto economy. The second step was to create an education campaign, and I started teaching classes. I started with law enforcement, and uh, Saeed al Hajri, who you just saw here, was one of the first people that helped me actually create these classes in Dubai. And the first classes we did were in the Dubai Police uh, Academy or Dubai Police Officers Club. And it was mostly law enforcement and early adopters of uh, cryptocurrency and uh, blockchain, basically. And that was a huge success. And uh, then we moved to uh, Dubai Entrepreneurship Academy, where we did a lot of classes uh, around um, uh, cryptocurrency. We did mining as well. We did something called master noding, which is a, a proof of stake, plus providing uh, uh, ledger services. And that was really the good. The feedback was really great. Uh, and people loved the classes, loved the the input and they were asking what is the next thing. Uh, what we realized also from these classes that we have, have created a really good community here in, in Dubai and in the UAE and people were coming in from different Emirates, from Abu Dhabi, from Northern Emirates and they were really uh, enthusiastic about this technology. What I've noticed also is that it took all kinds of people, not only young people but also older people, businessmen, even family offices were really interested in this, and they were coming themselves, not sending representatives. And it was really overwhelming to see this uh, huge interest in this uh, crypto economy, despite all this negative uh, media coverage that was uh, around uh, cryptocurrencies. So uh, what, what are we doing next? So I started in February uh, creating an uh, OTC business. 
the reason for that is to attract big companies and funds to come here. We now have a good community of people who are in Dubai who are using cryptocurrencies and very familiar with using it, but we want to bring in the big players. The reason for that, we want to, uh, we want to bring in big funds, we want to bring in investors, we want to bring in uh, people who want to invest in cryptocurrency because we have a lot of those people that attended the classes that want to do their own ICOs. They have ideas that they want to realize, especially around uh, you know, AI, around uh, healthcare, around even logistics and that kind of stuff. And even as simple as selling cars or selling goods. And they want a decentralized alternative to the centralized uh, uh, offerings that we have here. And we have a lot of bright minds here from uh, all over the, the place. And if you're, if you're not sure if that's true, just look around. You'll see a lot of people here in this conference. You'll see we have a couple of conferences coming up uh, next week. And you'll see a lot of people from everywhere in the world. They all meet here in Dubai and they love it here in Dubai because this area, this city actually fosters innovation. They put in the right people, they put in the right minds to work on the right problems. And uh, nothing is uh, stopping you here. You have all the backing from the government, from the economy, from the uh, finding talent. Uh, even uh, hopefully uh, you will uh, soon be able to even find the funding uh, here in Dubai. We are also uh, attacking heads on the media actually. We're not say, I'm not gonna say attacking. <laughs> Uh, we're trying to actually win over the media as well. So uh, we're going to start doing uh, classes for the media as well, uh, starting in Ramadan this year, which is, uh, I think, 17th of May. Uh, it's going to be focused on the media group. We're going to bring them in an informal setting, sit them in a, a place where they can have casual conversation about cryptocurrencies and what they are, the positives and the negatives, just to remove all this negative stigma that they have. What we've noticed in the local media is they're just mirroring the international media and they do not really understand cryptocurrency uh, and the level that the experts uh, around the world understand it. Therefore, they cannot really make a judgment on all the news that they read. And to better educate them, we can actually move one step further from uh, actually just copying the media to actually having critical uh, eyes on the actual news that they get and they can actually choose and select which ones they can republish or actually add commentary on it as well. So uh, what's next? Uh, I think uh, after creating and bringing in the investors is creating incubators and creating uh, areas where you enable this collision of, of uh, investors and uh, technology uh, makers, big names in technology, and also uh, uh, startups and uh, people with talent who have ideas that around uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology, and also uh, have ideas that are not solvable in the common, uh, you know, traditional sense, uh, but they are uh, solvable with. Uh, technologies like blockchain and uh, Hyperledger uh, or uh, other um, uh, distributed ledger technologies, including, for example, Ethereum or NIM or uh, any other cryptocurrency that you can come up with. And I know this is the only the beginning. I know distributed uh, ledger technology is at its infancy and it will grow. And there are other technologies that can be force multipliers. I know for a fact solving the identity problem will hugely impact uh, crypto uh, economy and blockchain economy in general, and also uh, solving the, the privacy issues. Uh, and that's already being done. Uh, uh, having sovereign identity and control over privacy, I think these are false force multipliers. And also AI is a huge force multiplier. Once we have companies, uh, that uh, tackle blockchain with AI, uh, I think that's going to be the future. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.